Okay, this is a uh, Midway Wild Kingdom 1971 EM uh, arcade shooting game. I just finished repairing it and I thought I'd just give it a quick walk through the major parts of it and uh, just how it basically operates. At the moment, the game's got all the doors, all the panels removed, the back glass removed, uh, and the mirror so we can get in and see all the working po components. Um, later, I'll put it all back together and show how the game plays. Um, it's a fairly good game. It's a lot of people regard as one of the best EM shooting games that was made. Um, I'll just take you over and show you a bit, a bit through it. The front, there's a lower section that's been removed of the game. Just a door. There's nothing really behind it. Uh, it's just a, mainly a storage panel. I think where you can actually store the rifle while it's being transported. Come up here, look at the coin door. Okay, this game actually had all the uh, documentation with it. In there. And the original coin box. here a bit we can see the end of the rifle arm on its pivot and there's a stylus on the end of that that basically makes contact um, on a disc like a printed circuit board copper copper pads and depending on where the, the gun is aimed that stylus will touch the correct pad and line up now if it just happens to line up the exact same position as a similar contact disc in the back of the game, um, there's one for each animal, each target, and you pull the trigger, a score is registered. Come along to the side of the game. The side of the game has a little access door as well, where you can actually get in and see the gun stylus a bit better. And you can actually perform an alignment if the game's been moved or transported it may shift or just just through wear um, so you periodically may just need to just align it up and adjust it what that basically involves is um, it's documented in the manual but you move one of the furthest targets say the elephant in this case to the far left hand side and you also check on its contact disc, it's sitting in the middle of the, the contact for that location. You then come along to the front of the game, um, point your rifle, sight the animal where you think it's correct, and have a look underneath at this uh, contact disc, the circuit board underneath, and just see if the stylus is also matching up on the corresponding uh, contact pad. If it's not, you can use the thumb screws to move the uh, move the disc left and right, backwards and forwards, until that's centered. You then go around the back, move the animal back over to the far right, put it in the center of its own disc, uh, its own little contact disc for that position, and do the alignment back on the gun around the front again. And then you just perform that a couple of times until you're satisfied that it is um, the gun is actually lining up the correct spot and it's matching the right spot on the animal. Um, the gun's actually got a, a solenoid attached to it as well, um, quite a powerful one to give you a recoil. You can see there's a coin meter in the front, uh, plus your starter and your ballast for your, um, your ultraviolet black light. Okay, have a look down the, uh, the side of the game. You see there's that little access door you can remove. Um, glass is being pulled out so we can see the score reels. Um, there's basically one central motor to run the whole lot of uh, score reels. Uh, left hand side is your score. Um, far left is the number of credits you have on the game. And on the right the two digits are for your uh, number of shots fired. And you have a, a maximum of 25 shots. There's a couple of lights just to light the glass up and then you've got a couple of other lights um, to tell you what the high score is you have to beat to, to win a free game. And you can see a bit of the play field down the bottom there. 
we'll go around the back in a sec and we'll have a look at that there's the gun you can see that's on a pivot it can go all sort of directions and that will move that stylus underneath In this game, um, we're actually running it from a step-down transformer. The game runs 110 volts uh, US voltage. Some games can be converted uh, to 240 by taps on the transformer. Unfortunately, this game doesn't have that option. It can only run on 110, so I'm running it from a step-down transformer. I'll have another look at those score reels from the back. You can see there's that one single motor with shaft. Uh, which runs the entire length and by operating some relays um, they will in turn turn some little clutches on and off and enable the score reels to turn or stop the uh, the motor continuously turns while the game's running and then the the relays just uh, engage the clutch or disengage the clutch to turn the score reels around this one had a problem uh, must have experienced a, a jolt at some stage and the um, all the spot welds around the score reel had broken so I was able to just drill those out and just replace those with screws right looking back down inside the game we can see the play field there's normally a mirror which goes in here across here so when you're looking, you're, you're actually seeing a view back down inside the game. Uh, I believe one of the earliest games this was a Dale gun. And um, rather than making the games you know, six foot wide, six foot deep, you can build your playfield back down into the, into the base of the, the game. And it gives the, the player that illusion of depth. Looks like you're actually, you know, seeing if quite a few feet away you're aiming at targets quite a fair way away by looking back down inside the thing there's an ultraviolet black light um, which is on and that uh, that causes all the the painted parts to glow or fluoresce we'll turn that on a second we'll see what happens when that's moving all right here's the back of the game um, there's a series of motors one for each animal and also each animal has those contact discs we were talking about so the game knows at any one time uh, where the position of the animal is um, we'll have a look at one of those one's a bit closer this one here is for the uh, for the elephant this is the one you need to ad adjust your targets with and you can see that motor just pivots left and right and the targets on the end of that and you can see there's some contacts which the little wiper or fingers are just moving over and they're all labelled with a letter normally you want to get on this put the elephant on this end position right in the centre of that contact there and do your adjustment on the front then put it right in the centre of the, the far left contact and do the adjustment again, do that a couple of times until you're satisfied it's all working um, down the bottom is the uh, what's called the leapers. There's some targets actually spring up, and when you hit them, they drop down quite quickly out of out of view. So there's a separate motor to spin those, and a separate contact disc. Um, there is another separate alignment procedure if you actually have to pull that um, sort of unit apart. It's basically the same thing: aiming, aiming for your targets, and making sure the the contacts are in a certain position but that's in the manual as well okay on the back of the game we have all the the main circuit the main relays um it's the end game so you're probably you know 95 percent of it is all relays there's a couple of circuit boards um the one on the far left is the motor control board controls the speed of all the animals um, and the hunter uh, then you have a sound effects board, different sound effects for each for each animal, and uh, an amplifier card on the th on the far right. Um, a lot of these games did also include an eight track, 
but this one unfortunately didn't come with it and that has um, background jungle sounds if you if you have that in your game so yeah most of most of the game most of the game is made up of relays and contacts but yeah small small amount of circuitry all right well that's pretty well cover the game just basically how it operates and a, a bit of a view inside of it um, what I'll do now, I'll just start a game up from the back and we'll, we'll have a look at it operating. What I can do, I can actually just start a game from around the back to start really. You can hear that score motor now, it's starting to turn. What this game does, it, um, it's a time game, it's a race between you and Jungle Charlie the Hunter. But it does, it does give you a chance, you have the first shot before it will start working. So you can take as long as you like on that first shot, but well, once you fire once, the game will uh, start, and it's a race between you and Jungle Charlie, who can hit the target first. So we can see that, that elephant target, the one that's moving at the moment, backwards and forwards. So if I actually make a single trigger in the back here, the game will actually start and Jungle Charlie will will start actually shooting at some of the targets. Now the leaper's going down the bottom. Okay, so here's Jungle Charlie had a shot shot the animal now the next one's put on elephant shot now it's one of the other animals okay, so while that's operating we'll have a look back inside here I'm watching it going to play so that goes. that's jungle charlie in the center and he continuously moves back and forwards so if you're too slow you lose your shot and he'll he'll beat you to it the speed of uh, Jungle Charlie and the animals are controlled on that motor control board. This game originally had a fault where the, um, the speed of Charlie couldn't be adjusted, so he was running flat out and it was um, almost impossible to sort of beat. The game runs for 25 shots, um, whether your shots or his shots, it doesn't matter, but 25 shots and then the game's over. Alright, we'll, we'll finish this up now and I'll put the game on back together and show the game in operation fully running.